Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the gigantic neighbor, Jupiter, and the resolution to one of the biggest mysteries of this planet. The mystery being this right here, the aurora on Jupiter. Up until now, nobody actually knew exactly how the aurora on Jupiter is being generated. This was one of the biggest mysteries, unanswered mysteries, for the past few decades. And even though we know how the aurora is generally created on planets like Earth and even planets like Mars, the mysterious aurora on Jupiter still did not really make sense, once again, until now. So let's discuss this in today's video, and let's actually find out how the aurora on gas giants, despite the visual similarity, is actually very different from the aurora we have on planet Earth. And so first of all, how are the aurora or northern slash southern lights generated on planet Earth? Now this mystery the scientists have solved a long time ago. We know that these beautiful lights are generated in a relatively simple way. Planet Earth has a magnetosphere, a relatively powerful one compared to some of the other planets. And the magnetosphere of our planet is formed by these magnetic lines you see right here. But once in a while when our sun experiences some sort of an outburst such as a solar flare and a lot of particles are released from the surface of the sun, as these particles make their way toward planet Earth, some of them get deflected by the magnetic field but some of them end up being trapped by the magnetic lines and follow the lines all the way to the south and the north pole, striking the planet right here in this region. And as these charged particles from the sun strike the planet, or more specifically strike the atmosphere of the planet, they end up creating these beautiful formations in the night skies. And depending on what particle they strike, they'll create different colors. And since the atmosphere is mostly composed of oxygen and nitrogen, those are usually the particles responsible for most of the colors. For example, here's an aurora produced by the excitation of nitrogen, whereas here's the one where it's mostly oxygen. But because of where the magnetic lines connect to our planet, on Earth, pretty much most of the aurora usually take place between 65 and 80 degrees of latitude, corresponding to the location where the magnetic lines kind of enter our planet. And because of this, certain latitudes will never actually have aurora, unless, of course, it's an extremely powerful event from the sun, such as the famous Carrington event that happened in the 1800s and supposedly produced aurora even in the Caribbean. Nevertheless, you're not going to see aurora in certain regions of the planet. At the same time, normally the northern lights usually correspond to the southern lights. In other words, it's sort of like a mirror image of one another. Which is once again related to how solar flares are captured by the magnetic lines of our planet and how they propagate all the way to the planet itself. But that's on Earth. The thing is, it doesn't seem to work on Jupiter and on Saturn, and also possibly other gas giants as well. As a matter of fact, the aurora there seem to be very different. With first major mystery discovered decades ago being the fact that the northern aurora does not really correspond to the one in the south. They do seem to be very different. And they also seem to occur at different times. At the same time, they also seem to be different in power, which is not something we ever see on Earth. Moreover, the aurora and Jupiter are able to be formed way, way past the 80 degree line, essentially right at the North Pole or right at the South Pole, something that does not happen on our own planet. And so this right here is once again a mystery. It's almost impossible or was almost impossible to explain how this could actually occur on this beautiful planet. Now, it was still believed that this was obviously something to do with ions striking the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, today we believe that if a planet has a magnetosphere and if it also has some sort of an atmosphere, it very likely will also have aurora on the surface. But the actual mechanism could be entirely different, and it seems to be different for Jupiter. And trying to figure out this mystery was a priority for many, many decades. Now, first of all, it's important to understand that Jupiter is an extreme planet with an extremely powerful magnetic field. So powerful as a matter of fact that if you could actually see it, it would sort of look like this from planet Earth. And interestingly, it's so huge in terms of size that it seems to even reach all the way to the orbit of Saturn. Because of this, the aurora produced on Jupiter have a tremendous amount of power, gigawatts of power, way, way more power than anything here on planet Earth. And on top of this, the aurora on Jupiter also seem to come in different flavors. Jupiter also seems to have powerful X-ray aurora and very powerful ultraviolet aurora as well, all of which might have a different creation story. But in this paper, the scientists decided to focus on trying to figure out how the X-ray aurora created by trying to combine the observations from two different observatories. The X-ray observatory known as XMM Newton orbiting planet Earth and various observations from the Juno mission currently orbiting Jupiter. 
And so what exactly did the scientists discover and what exactly is the solution to this problem? Well, to try to solve this, they had to first create a model. And the model in this case focuses on assuming that Jupiter's magnetic lines emanate from one part of the planet going millions and millions of kilometers away to then be rejoined on the other side of the planet without ever really being connected to the solar activity or to the solar magnetic field in any way. And so because the magnetic field here is so extremely powerful, it's sort of independent of the magnetic field that's normally caused by the solar wind coming from the sun. And so here the scientists in this paper were able to use approximately 26 hours of data from the XMM Newton telescope combined with the data from the Juno mission as well. And the first thing they were able to notice is that there was a very unusual but also very periodic pulsation every 27 minutes that was detectable by both of the missions. Pulsations that indicated that the aurora themselves were very likely being generated by changes in the magnetic field of Jupiter. And with every single pulsation detected by the Juno mission, the change in the magnetosphere, that's when the XMM Newton was able to detect the unusual X-ray aurora that was then visible on the surface of Jupiter. Or in other words, this right here was very likely caused by the changes in the magnetic field itself, which also implied that the aurora here are generated because of the changes in the magnetosphere, or essentially unusual fluctuations in the magnetic lines of Jupiter. But what was causing this? And more importantly, where were the charged particles coming from? Well, further analysis suggested that a lot of these particles, which are most likely various charged ions of sulfur and oxygen, are almost certainly coming from eruptions on Io, the beautiful volcanic moon of Jupiter. Io is known to erupt all the time, and it's also known to produce a lot of other formations around Jupiter, including one of the potential rings. But more importantly, it releases a tremendous amount of ions that are then very likely deposited in the atmosphere of Jupiter. And this activity is very likely the reason for the aurora we are observing. But one thing to note here is that these ions are just stuck in the magnetic field of Jupiter and normally just kind of stay in the magnetic lines without really doing anything. So something must happen in order for all of these ions to suddenly start converging on the poles of Jupiter in order to suddenly create these beautiful formations we refer to as aurora. And the scientists believe that the sudden motion of sulfur and oxygen is very likely caused by some sort of a pressure, most likely due to the solar wind that does reach Jupiter as well. And the pressure from the solar wind sort of compresses the magnetic lines just a little bit, producing what the scientists refer to as modulated EMIC waves, electromagnetic ion cyclotron waves. And so this compression that's caused by the solar wind initiates a kind of a motion of all of these sulfur and oxygen ions, with each of them striking the atmosphere of Jupiter at different times in different regions. And because the magnetic lines on Jupiter are so tremendously large and are millions and millions of kilometers in size, some of these sulfur and oxygen ions will take quite a while to get there. And so this is one of the reasons why the actual aurora form at different times and in different regions. But these observations also imply one more thing. These aurora are probably created in a slightly different way on other planets, including Saturn. On Saturn, the actual ions are not sulfur or oxygen. They're actually, most likely, ions of water, because they usually come from Enceladus. Enceladus is responsible for releasing a tremendous amount of water into the regions around Saturn. And a lot of the water particles will also get ionized and then get deposited into the magnetic lines of Saturn. And so the assumption right now is that something extremely similar very likely happens around Saturn and something extremely similar probably happens around other gas giants and of course other exoplanets. But the important takeaway from all of this is that Aurora seem to be created in different ways on different planets. In a very different way as a matter of fact. I've already discussed how the Aurora on Mars are generated in one of the previous videos. But compared to Martian Aurora, these ones are created in a very different way altogether. Which of course also means that it would be really interesting to one day find out how all of this is generated on some other planets out there as well. Although for now it's still quite exciting to find out that after around 40 years of research, the scientists have finally figured out the exact mechanism responsible for the generation of X-ray aurora on Jupiter, a mystery that's been bugging them for many many years. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. 
maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, or maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.